I've been thinking about PC handheld emulation. It's something that I don't really take a huge part in, but apparently it is incredibly popular and devices like the Steam Deck are amazing at it. And I made a video talking about that recently. So I figured what is in fact the best PC handheld for emulation. And for me personally, it was also kind of surprising. The first device we're going to be talking about is the venerable, I already mentioned it already, the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is one of the most popular handhelds for PC emulation, mainly because of things like Emu Deck and the all new Retro Deck. Those two softwares make emulation on the Steam Deck so much easier than it is on many other handhelds. But Emu Deck has made its way to other PC handhelds like the RG Ally. So that barrier that was once there is no longer there now. Similar things are even coming to Android devices. But emulation in general on the Steam Deck is awesome. It's capable of pretty much emulating anything up until the Nintendo Switch and even some PS4 games as recent testing has shown. It is capable of emulating PS4 games at roughly 30 to 40 FPS, which is, let's be honest, pretty much the exact FPS the PS4 ran at for most of its games. But that's only how it is right now. With time, the PS4 emulator will get more optimized, will get better, and hopefully the Steam Deck gets an overall better PS4 experience. Nintendo Switch emulation has been pretty solid for a while now, and I honestly have no complaints. There's always edge cases, but honestly, I pretty much play all the mainstream stuff. Think of Pokemon, Mario, Zelda, that kind of stuff. I don't really try anything super niche. But from what I've seen, it is capable of pretty much emulating any Nintendo Switch game. And of course, it is more than capable of all your 8, 16-bit, N64, PS1, PS2, GameCube, anything you could possibly want it to emulate, it can. And the way you go about doing it is honestly pretty good. The overall experience is solid. At a starting price point of about $400, it is pretty pricey as a dedicated emulation handheld, but you don't necessarily want a PC handheld for how great its value, you just want the best experience possible. And the Steam Deck can provide that. But the Steam Deck does have the potential for immense value, especially if you can find a used or refurbished Steam Deck, especially if you're going for a 64 gig, you can get that for as cheap as $280 from Valve for a refurbished one, and about 300 on the used market. And of course you could upgrade it after the fact with a micro SD card or open it up and put it in your SSD for significantly cheaper than buying a more upgraded model. And not to mention the experience if you used an OLED Steam Deck starting about $550. That variant would be an amazing experience for its OLED screen and higher refresh rate, especially for those 860 bit titles. I personally love playing games like that on OLED screens because the pixels are so sharp and the color so vibrant. The original Steam Deck and the Steam Deck OLED would make amazing choices for emulation. Moving on to my next choice, which is very controversial at the moment, the Legion Go S. And I know the Legion Go S currently is insanely expensive in producing underwhelming and lackluster performance and just general not being very good. But this is a future thought. This is what I predict will be a good choice. And that is once the SteamOS version comes out and once the Z1 Extreme versions are also released. Because assuming it is going to be around that $500 price point for those Z1 Extreme variants with lower specs, I think those would be an amazing value, assuming they maintain that $500 price point. That is significantly more powerful than the Steam Deck in offering you overall better battery life, potentially with a more efficient SoC, and just so much more performance that it's a no-brainer. The Z2 Go chip, as it currently stands, isn't great, but is still capable of emulation. But I seriously wouldn't consider getting that option at least until the SteamOS variants come out in May, because as it currently stands, it is just simply not a good value or have a decent enough performance to even consider it. But I'm of the opinion that once the SteamOS versions come out and the Z1 Extreme variants come out in May, those would be a good choice, assuming they maintain that one $500 price point and just overall better stability with the better SoC. And having SteamOS also helps immensely for all the nonsense Windows tends to have, making for a significantly better overall gaming experience for those who aren't 
deeply tech savvy or are comfortable navigating Windows 4 emulation. So overall, for the Legion Go S, I would say wait until the SteamOS version comes out because as it currently stands, I simply can't recommend it for emulation because even with the fact that emulation is significantly as intensive than normal PC games generally, it is still not adequate enough, at least in my book, for how much you're gonna be spending on it. Before we get to my choice of the best emulation handheld, I would say there are a few things that used to be good options, but simply no longer exist. Like the Loki Zero, though that device had not necessarily been extremely powerful, that device did have a good chance of being good for emulation. But as it currently stands, you can't really get your hands on it at all. There was a whack ton of variants of the Loki Zero, some with Intel chips, some with AMD chips, but my favorite one to recommend to people for emulation purposes was the Ryzen 3 Mendocino version. Both that Ryzen and its Intel counterpart using an i3 were about $260 to $270, and that was a pretty solid price point, and you were able to emulate pretty much anything you would need, at least up until the very top end of emulation. You might have been able to get away with some Nintendo Switch games, but generally speaking, it, that's not really what it was designed for. It was designed to be the best GameCube and PS2 you could possibly have in a pretty small form factor, all things considered for PC handhelds. Those were some amazing devices, but they've all but disappeared. A vast majority of those budget PC handhelds either don't exist or saw price increases, pushing them in competition with devices like the Steam Deck and more powerful stuff like the RNG Ally. The iNeo Next was another one of those devices that had an immense amount of potential, but is now almost entirely unavailable. That came with a Ryzen 5 4500U or a 4800U. And I don't have exact date on this, but knowing how these processors perform in other applications, they would have been great for emulation. It would have topped out in terms of emulation around the Nintendo Switch, but it could have been potentially possible to emulate PS4 games on this thing. But by the time my PS4 emulator came out, these devices just poofed, vanish, completely gone. Moving on to the last device we're going to be talking about, though. MSI Claw poses a very interesting case right now because the original Claw was lambasted for being across the board pretty terrible, but given time, it did develop into a pretty decent handheld, but by that point, they had already released an all new device completely supplanting the old one, effectively clipping its wings before it ever had a chance to fly. You can currently pick up the original MSI Claw for about $450, and that's honestly pretty freaking good. The original MSI Claw was able to put out some pretty decent numbers in certain games that it didn't either crash or have any issues in, being somewhere in between the Z1 Extreme and the Z1 Non-Extreme chips, so it was a pretty decent performer for its time. But something this device has uniquely is an AV1 encoder, which on the surface doesn't really matter, but it does mean that it has the potential for being the best for game streaming. It can, I believe, also help improve specifically PS3 emulation, but take that with a grain of salt. Honestly, thinking about it now, I could be thinking of AVX 512. Nevertheless, the claw has a very compelling performance advantage and just value comparison to some of the other devices we've talked about, especially in comparison to something like the Legion Go S as it currently stands, and the Steam Deck to a certain extent. Sure, you do lose SteamOS, which is super helpful for emulation, but in my opinion, the performance of games over the Steam Deck, to me, are worth it more, allowing you to, if you were interested into PC gaming, to go into that as well. And there's also just a better deal to be had with the Claw, which is surprising considering how much I disliked this device when it originally came out. But that changes a lot when it's like half of the price that it used to be and got significantly better with time. And of course, this device is more than capable of emulating pretty much anything and everything you could possibly want it to. It can do Xbox 360, PS3, PS4, Nintendo Switch. It can do pretty much anything you'd want it to. At this point, the one deciding factor for what is the best PC handled for emulation 
I would say is battery life and that's between the Steam Deck and the MSI Claw and honestly if you're especially if you're getting the OLED the Steam Deck is going to crush the Claw but if you wanted the most possible performance the Claw is the way you should go I would love to hear which one you guys would pick so leave a comment down below I would love to hear what you guys think about this don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe all the other social media groups down below and last but not least have a wonderful day